So today I'm gonna to talk about a way to sneak a little wrist prep into a practice in which there is no wrist prep. And as you guys know, I'm really passionate about one, helping students understand the concept of prerequisites, and two, um, wrapping a class I'm gonna share with you a super secret technique for secretly doing wrist prep in a yoga class in which they do not do any wrist prep. As you guys may know, if you've been paying attention for a little while to the stuff that I do, and if you're fresh to this feed, of course, welcome, um, that I'm passionate about the idea of bringing prerequisites into a yoga class so that people are doing things that are level appropriate and also are um, having the opportunity to experience the joy of progress and sequencing in a way that prepares people's joints for the types of load that yoga uh, requires that they, that they bear in a general um, group class environment where people are coming in with all sorts of different kinds of um, levels of capacity. So I'm passionate about wrist because I've been through a lot of wrist stuff myself. Um, I played sports and I broke my wrist twice and um, was never really taught wrist prep and that brought up some issues. Uh, and um, I'm actually dealing with a wrist injury on the left side, which is just from a really unfortunate accident. So it's kind of ironic because it's like I learned all this stuff and really bulletproof my wrist and then I fell off a wall. So um, a lot of the time in yoga practices, you might start in Tadasana standing with your hands in Namaskar, right? That's like a common way to begin a yoga class. And of course, this is a beautiful reverent position and a moment during which you can set an intention for a practice. And um, an intention I've been using in my own practice lately is just to use a very simple mantra, which is I love you. And I know that might sound a little like flighty or whatever, but um, I do struggle with a lot of like negative self-talk and whatnot and um, just because I'm a human being and so sometimes I'll set the intention at the beginning of a practice that if um, I start to that voice starts to rear its head I just have to say I love you it's almost like reminding myself to breathe it's the same idea I just I love you and sometimes I'll start a practice with a loving-kindness meditation so I've sort of tapped into that feeling Anyway, here's how you can secretly prepare your wrist while standing in Tadasana and setting your intention with your hands in prayer or namaskar. Uh, a way that you can do this is utilizing the magic square from Katona Yoga and adding on top an element of progressive and regressive angle isometrics from functional range conditioning. So I think this is a pretty cool integration and I start a lot of practices this way when I teach. So the magic square is just like a tic-tac-toe board. There's a, a, a bottom row, a middle row, and a top row, and then there are three columns and it gets cut into nine. So this is a nice way to bring yourself into your body um, and also start to wake up the, your hands and wrists and make a little space in the joint before you bear weight on your hands. So bring your hands into prayer position, into namaskar. And when you do this, um, it's tempting to kind of drop your head because that is a reverent position. But if you do want to drop your head, First, bring your chin back and then just make a little tuck so that you're not sacrificing spinal integrity. And then start by just pressing your hands together enough that you feel that there's some action in your hands. And as you do that, pull your shoulders downwards and backwards. And it's not that that's the only position your shoulders are allowed to live in, but this is going to help bring stretch into the areas that you need in order to prepare your wrists. And then we'll magic square the hands. So for one, press together the center of the base of your palms. And as we move to each subsequent point, keep the pressure in the previous point. For two, press together your index finger knuckles. For three, go over the top of your hands and press together at the middle of the outer edge of your hands. Keep the pressure on the other points and also notice if your two thumbs are trying to do two different things. For four, go up and press together at your pinky finger hand knuckles. For five, press together the center of your palms. Six, press together the fleshy part of the base of your thumb, the mound of Venus. And as you do that, feel for rotating your pinkies up, your thumbs down, and see if you can get a little bit of a cleaner fold into the wrist without sacrificing the shoulder position that we started. For seven, press together in between your thumb knuckle and your index finger knuckle. Remember to keep the pressure on all the other points. 
Ramp up the pressure when you go to eight and press together the outer edge of the base of your wrist. And then for nine, go to index and middle finger knuckle. Push those together. Now press all of your hands and fingers together, keeping awareness of all of those points. And you can see I'm starting to shake a little bit from the isometric effort. And then for 10, take a small inhale, hold your breath for a moment, keep all of the hand pressure points and try to pull your fingertips away from each other. And you'll immediately feel that there's an activation in the muscles on the backside of your wrist and an intensification of the stretch in the forearms. And as you're doing this pull away of the fingertips, reach the base of your forearms towards the ground to increase the angle of wrist extension. And you can repeat that two to three times. I think that this is a really nice way you'll feel like immediately that you have more range of motion and extension in your wrist. You'll turn on the muscles both in the front and the back of the wrist with the progressive when you push together and the regressive angle when you try to pull apart. And you'll also get a really great, um, you'll be able to gain some insight really about uh, what part of your hand doesn't connect as well as the other parts of your hand. And you'll also be able to track from your hand all the way up the energetic lines of your body into your shoulders and chest and you'll be able to source the root cause of why it may be hard for you to um, equally load your hands. So again, every exercise gives you the opportunity to gain insight beyond just the individual exercise. It's always about um, what sort of reflection and mirror the, the movement provides more so than like, does the movement look perfect? Uh, again, I hope that this is useful to you. Um, play with it in your practice and you'll come up with your own realizations. That's really the beauty of practice is considering it like a laboratory and then stepping into the lab with that sort of joyful and motivated attitude of like, what's this gonna show me today? And it might not always show you something that you wanna see, but it's important to um, acknowledge all of the things that your practice reveals to you so that um, you can step forward in a more wholesome way.